I'd like to start by saying that this video is courtesy of Jürgen Benecke. Jürgen is a US-based German rider who is the same age as me, and he's been racing all the bikes since he was a junior in the 80s. He won the UCI Downhill World Cup in 1993 uh, on the mountain bike, which is a uh, testimony to his bike handling skills and experience on all kinds of different bikes. You can find him on all the social media, but in particular, check out his cycling skills channels uh, on YouTube and Instagram. And he's got a bike storage company called The Hanger. And uh, if you Google that or find his other social media sites, you'll be able to find that. So thanks, Jurgen, for the bar cam coverage that made this video possible. Due to some serious flaws in the USAC ranking system, I'm lined up in the second row. If you look off to the right, you'll see my kid on the other side of the fence, uh, which was a lot of fun for me during the race. Flynn screams, go Papa, and then we're rolling. For me, right away, things are going right. And even though I've started in the second row, you can see me just slipping forward through all the little gaps uh, as they open. I just get really fortunate uh, that those things appear and I'm able to go through them. When the race starts, we're starting by lights and not by a gun. The rider in front of David Hildebrand misses the light completely. Uh, and this, understandably, creates a lot of panic for Dave. You do all this work and all this prep and you're finally on the start line and the first thing that can go wrong basically does go wrong for him. Dave is able to get around the guy who missed the start light and immediately now is trying to fix that problem by sprinting as hard as he can or trying to make up that ground going into the first turn. I'm able to float right onto the front and take that turn sort of gently and carefully since I've managed to get there first. Dave has a lot of speed because he's trying to fix that start and he has to hit the brakes. He ends up overlapping wheels, nose wheelies, and does a really good job of scootering to save it. But it's not the start that Dave is looking for, obviously. Once I'm on the front, I just shut it down and start riding tempo. I did not want to be leading uh, so soon in the race and so I feel in control, but also I do not need to continue to ride in first position. Number 703, Jason Hartman, he sprints by me in that second turn uh, trying to take the lead, but he takes a really short line into the turn and he's got too much speed for that turn. Uh, I just set up wide, uh, carry all my momentum, keep pedaling and just roll right back onto the front without changing my speed or increasing my effort at all. I'm go just going faster with less energy and that's a theme that you'll see throughout the video. A minute into the race and you can see again that I am not driving it. I am just sitting, riding tempo, trying to win the next corner while the battle kind of happens behind me. And you see defending champion Matt Davies moves up onto my wheel without trying to pass me or take that spot from me. Again, I'm just riding calmly, no harder than I have to. Uh, Dave is now back in the picture. He's moved up into third. And he's fixed his start at this point and is a great spot. And you might argue should be happy to stay where he is without trying to fix it further. At this point, we're just all rolling toward the wall with the first run up in mind. And we all know that the race can be lost here and it is ideal to be leading into it. Dave definitely has this in mind. Because I'm not riding full out, it gives Dave the opportunity to move up into a small space on Matt's right side to pass. He nearly clips the stake there and the fence. I don't know that he's coming and I feel in control. I don't expect anybody to be passing me between those two turns, uh, but Dave has that momentum and keeps coming, is able to pass me and take the lead, which does catch me off guard. I think the thing to note is that after he passes me, I don't respond. I know the thing that I need most is to come into the bottom of the run with some space. Not necessarily first, but room to roll. So when he passes me, I use this as a moment to take a little rest. Uh, I leave some room for people to crash, and I just roll the entrance to the run with momentum rather than being right on someone's wheel uh, as we enter that turn. 
And of course, that is exactly what happens. I have room to go around Dave when he stumbles without having to stop. And this is where Jurgen Benecke moves up past Mark and onto Dave and myself's wheel uh, on the run up. On the remount, I wasn't sure if I could take the lead back, and I'm a little too close to Dave and up higher than him, which puts me on his left side. This is a problem because the line that I want to take is to swing way to the right on the downhill to set up wide for the next left-hand turn and carry my speed back up the second run-up. But I'm stuck on the left side, and I have to go the short way and brake more to make space for myself going into the turn. It's a wasted chance for me to go faster with less energy because I didn't leave myself enough room on the remount. When we dismount for the second run, I move to the left so that on the remount at the top, I have more time to remount and clip in for the ride across the top before we drop back in. It's not the shortest way, but that extra half a second of space will definitely pay off for me. Dave runs the whole thing while I remount and ride. This takes about the same amount of time, but it's a significant difference in energy. I'm coasting and recovering and carrying momentum while Dave is running, which will definitely benefit me on the next section. We have completely different lines at the remount as a result. Dave keeps going straight and takes the low and short line, which is very rutted and muddy. I also go straight, but in a different direction. I take a couple of extra steps to get all the way left and further up the hill where there's still some grass, and Jurgen follows me on that line. Here, I'm able to remount from a high point and use it as an acceleration opportunity. I stay out of the soft ruts, roll into the lead, and create a gap with no actual attack or intentional acceleration. As I roll away, I cannot believe that I'm leading. I don't want to be leading, and I expect it at this point in the race to be on a wheel and following and just hanging on. I know it's early in the race on a really heavy course with a lot of pedaling, so I'm just riding tempo here, maintaining, recovering, waiting for the big attack from behind that just never comes. I'm not sprinting out of the turns or even trying to increase the gap. I'm just maintaining the status quo, and it's fair to say that I was afraid to be off the front this early in the race. As we approach the barriers for the first time, you see that I set up wide, clip out of my left pedal first, coast all the way up to the plank, and only take two steps. The planks are high and the ground is soft, and my saddle does get stuck on the inside of my arm, which keeps me from being able to lift it as high as I'd like to. I do run diagonally across the course to the right side, where I know that there's drier ground and grass, and a place that I can remount and ride the next section, rather than having to run the whole thing. I give up a second on the front end, but I gain five back on the exit, which will be even more visible on lap two. As we get to the sand for the first time, I'm still just riding tempo. The sand is hard packed and inconsequential unless you make a mistake on the entrance. This is a windy section and it's hard, but I'm, again, just maintaining before heading back into the woods where I know one of the hardest pedaling sections is coming. I am definitely not driving it yet. This is one of the heaviest sections with a very soft, spongy mud. I'm riding the edges of the track, looking for grass and firm ground, sort of tightrope walking, and pedaling very hard until about halfway through the pit. I take a micro rest here once I get to the firm, faster ground before the trench that's coming up next. At the entrance to this section, I have not figured the best line out yet. 
It was best to go inside through the puddle, but I was still afraid of what was under there. So I was going wide, and it made setting up for the right-hand turn on the entrance to the trench more difficult, but I did correct this in later laps. This is one of the most important sections for me all day. I've been saving a match, so I can go all in for this every lap. There's only one way to ride this section, and it is 100% effort. You can see the gap that I create on both effort and technique, as opposed to one or the other. This allows me to rest on the pavement after and recover and look back and try and get a sense of what's happening. It's here I realize that Jurgen and I have ridden away from the field and I'm completely surprised by it. So this is when I finally start to ride. I've got the course broken down into sections. I recover on the pavement, make a smooth turn, and then it's time to start really punching it where I can. This is also one of my favorite parts of the race. You'll see Flynn on the right side of the course, waving a stick and cheering for me while my wife Janice is taking pictures. It totally cracked me up during the race, but it also really definitely motivated me. In this part of the course, I'm still resting on the entrances to any technical sections, so I get to them at the right speed without a lot of braking, and I save a match for the exits. I also almost hit the storage shed here, looking behind me to see what's going on, which would have been a disaster. Here I take a tighter line than Jurgen on the left, because I'm thinking about being set up for the right-hand turn that follows it. I carry a little less speed coming in, but that lets me carry more speed coming out and you can see the difference. But now that I'm committed, I'm punching out of the turns and really riding. Here I'm making really big turns using the whole course and just looking for dry ground. And again, you can hear Flynn, he's, he's run around to find us here and he's yelling, let's go, come on, Papa. I run the next uphill on the left side so that I'm better set up for the next turn. Uh, this was one of the crossiest sections of the course and really good spectating and I think it was a real shame that they removed this section for the elites. Here again I'm taking really big wide lines and punching it up the short hill. Generally, I'm intentionally riding in the ruts on the course and using them to turn rather than avoiding them, but here I took a wide line and I was wrong about it and had to dismount. Later laps, I went inside on this turn and stayed in that rut that was made from people who were running this section with their bikes and I was able to use it to ride the whole section. I'm resting in these turns, just trying to be smooth and carry momentum and stay where the traction is. This is a critical heavy mud section just before the finish. I'm using the dry spots and ruts to get around the turn and then I'm going 100% to get to the other side and you can see the gap it makes. And again, Flynn is running next to me yelling, let's go. let's go! I stay high for this run and I have to jump up to my bike to remount it as it's higher up on the off camber than I am. But doing that allows me to coast that downhill and get back to pedaling sooner, even though I have to dab a little bit as I fall into the rut. We're at the end of the first lap and we have a long, windy, open paved section followed by a field. A couple of weeks earlier, I did a 50 plus race for extra training where I just rode with the leaders until the last lap. And Jurgen was one of those riders and beat me in the last minute of the race with a really good sprint and great bike handling skills. So with that in mind, I am genuinely worried about him at this point and I am afraid to pull him around and lose.
I'm still very surprised to be leading and I haven't realized yet that I'm actually one of the strongest riders in the race and on a special day. So I try to get Jurgen to come through in the next turn, but it turns out that he is just hanging on and naturally he doesn't want to come through. I don't want to sit up completely though, so I go back to just riding tempo around these short sections near the pit until we get to the wall again. On lap two now, I have some understanding of where I can rest and where I can pedal. Um, I have room to take my own lines and I know what it is that I need to adjust from lap one. Still, I definitely feel like I'm in full panic mode on the front of the field. I didn't have a game plan coming in based around leading the race or being off the front. So I am afraid to go all in and blow up or get caught. but. Before I can think about it too hard, the run comes up again and we gotta do what you gotta do here. Now you can see more clearly where I was remounting and clipping in and the line that I want for the downhill and uphill compared to lap one. I take a much wider line all the way around the turn and am able to carry a lot more speed even though I have to eject quickly at the transition point. I am always shouldering my bike for these steep, muddy, potholed runs. Uh, a little bit of effort up front that definitely pays off overall. Here I pause for a second to make sure I'm set up for the drop-in. Once I'm up on the high line, I'm remounting and scootering down so that I don't high side over the rut and down the hill to the right. This creates a gap again that Jurgen has to close and I recover a little bit here rather than press on. Uh, the ground is soft and heavy so even what looks like soft pedaling has a lot of actual power and hard pedaling in it. I take a different approach to the barriers on this lap and try to hit the apex on the turn. Uh, it pushes me to the left on the exit with a little too much momentum and it makes it harder for me to cut back to the right. Uh, fortunately I get my elbow on the inside of my saddle this time so that helps. After the barriers, Jurgen goes the short way and keeps running while I again go the long way and remount and just roll the mud. And this is where I finally go clear from Jurgen. I also hear people cheering for Chris Peck and someone tells me Peck's coming. So I'm definitely worried, but also this is what I've been waiting for. I didn't attack, I just continued to ride hard where it was required and tempo where it wasn't and carry momentum where I could. Chris Peck comes by Jurgen just a few seconds behind with my teammate John Sakalowski on his wheel. In the headwind section, you can see how close they are, but they're chasing as hard as they can while I've been riding steady, blasting sections where I can gain a few seconds, and then resting after where I slowly give a few seconds back up.
Once you're again has to let go, you really can see how heavy the course is. Uh, it was the kind of track where if you blew up, you really crawled because the ground was heavy. Uh, I would compare it to like being on a gradual climb. At the end of lap one, I had 11 seconds over Chris and John, and at the end of lap two, they had closed it to four, and I considered waiting for them through the start finish, but it felt like too much gap to give up. Uh, at the end of lap three, Chris was just a second behind, and so I let him catch me. He immediately attacked on the pavement, which was perfect for me. For the first time all day, I had an actual wheel to follow, and in the headwind, I was able to recover completely. As we approached the wall for the fourth and final time, I passed Chris back, led into that first run up, coasted into my gap again, and this time for the first time all day, went all in to press things. I was careful where I needed to be and just feathered the gap through the final sections, but was able to celebrate for the length of the start finish stretch with a three second gap. My final lap was the fastest of the day, uh, a full 10 seconds faster than my first lap, and I was really proud uh, of that and happy to see it. What I hope this video demonstrates is that cross is not a muddy time trial. Yes, it's important to be strong, but knowing when to pedal and when to float, how to read a course, and how to make good line choices is as important as anything else. I wasn't necessarily the strongest rider in the race, and that probably was Chris Peck that day. But with the right combo of power and technique and application of those things, I was the fastest, and that is the important part. I was very fortunate to have Jurgen on my wheel for a lap and a half, and so I'm able to really show you all these normally invisible things that I do in order to maximize the fitness that I have. I just hope this can be helpful for all of you in the future, in your own races, whether it's your national championships or just your local weekend cross.